What a crazy year it has been, my friends. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing well. I've had a good, bad, and basically every adjective you could possibly put in front of the word year. And I'd like to share a little bit of what I have done since the pandemic sort of changed everything about my life. Um, I would like to mention before I go into this uh, presentation that I'm gonna be teaching at the online camp this summer, Common Ground on the Hills online camp. I'm gonna be teaching the five string banjo. Um, I'm gonna talk about the essential role patterns that will allow you to not only accompany the fiddle, but just basically achieve a holistic musical level of competence and hopefully find joy in that. The five string banjo can give you a very strong rhythmic foundation to become a better musician. So even if you're not a banjo player, I think you could learn a lot from this instrument, this machine. It's a crazy little thing, but this uh, past year has been um, the banjo year for me, and uh, I'm really into it, and I'm glad I get to teach it at Common Ground on the Hill. So anyway, let me talk about the last year a little bit. Um, about one year ago right now, or exactly one year ago right now, I was holed up in Asheville, North Carolina, at my friend Anya Hinkle's house. Anya had hosted my band during the tour that got cut in half um, in er early March of 2020, and then, you know, when the shit hit the fan, I decided to stay in the States, and Anya said, you know, you can hang out in my guest house, and, and I did. And I got free Japanese lessons from her incredible daughter, Sachi. We even did a uh, public service announcement for the North Carolina Arts Council, which you will see. And uh, Anya and I got to play a bunch of music. I'll just let you take a little gander at uh, some of the fun I had at Anya's house. Yubiki, yubiki, uso tsuitara, hari senbo, no maseru. We've all been hit hard by this crisis. Arts, well, you know, there's no live shows anymore. There's no people gathering, so artists are particularly in a pickle. But um, you can help by donating to the North Carolina Arts Foundation, which is awesome! Fist pump for the North Carolina Arts Foundation. Guys, give them some love. They're gonna use a lot of that money to give to North Carolinian artists, and we need it right now. Yeah. Helping hands. Helping hands. You know what to do. Anya's partner and uh, Sachi's father is named Gin Kogude. He's an amazing guy. He's a little bit more camera shy, but he certainly knows how to work a camera. And in April of last year, I got commissioned to write a song about the U.S. Postal Service, and Gin filmed it. And... The song went viral, viral for a banjo player. I got asked to play that song at a ton of events, like 
probably six or seven times. If you're a banjo player and you get asked to play a song six or seven times, that's like ape shit viral. Anyway, so uh, I'll let you see the song that was commissioned by ruralorganizing.org's Matt Hildreth, my buddy. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for commissioning that song. Thank you again for filming it. Thank you, Universe, for letting it get written up in the nation and get attention. I got to play it for a Get Out the Vote initiative um, with Tatiana Hargraves and Reed Stutz, which you'll see. And then uh, I even got to play it in front of um, Douchebag DeJoy's McMansion in Greensboro and uh, at a protest. So you get to see that. Uh, yeah, a plea to the U.S. government to fully fund the Postal Service. I'm waiting by the mailbox, I said check is coming soon. Come on and box these pain and pay a bill or two. But no more aid will come my way unless I take a stand. The US Postal Service darling needs help and hand. Oh, won't you heed this message? Won't you hear my mournful cry? It's hard to keep your wits about with all this dead and dying. But hard times will come our way on this you can't rely. Unless the Lord may not be full of our dreadful lies. Our government is doing a disservice to us all. To not deliver us the mail should be against the law. service song was a momentum builder it really set the stage for everything that came after it in my year uh i immediately got commissioned to do another song um for i guess to raise awareness about what the trump administration was doing to make life hell on the queer folk so i teamed up with some buddies in stokes and forsyth county north carolina near where I'm from. I'm from Forsyth County, from Winston-Salem. I'm actually now living in Stokes County, in Danbury. And, uh, well, I paired up with uh, Chad Nance and Dan Wolber and uh, in John Kay's house. Thank you, John Kay. And Arlie did sound. And a bunch of buddies kind of, like, welcomed me to Stokes County. And I, we made this music video. And I had so much fun on that trip here that I decided to stay here. But I'll tell you more about that later. Here's Pretty Little Rainbows. For all the pawn shop trash like me, the two cent queers and pork chop queens, this is a song to celebrate the news and news. We've got that good old greasy pride, some like it boiled, we like it fried, a bacon pancake help the rain clouds pass on through the little groundhogs came of age all eyes on us we're center stage we've waddled far and wide to preach our simple truth and from atop life's tallest bridges 
and through the heart of all religions, we'll let our pretty little rainbow shine on you. Let's keep an eye on years gone by The yesterdays ain't keen to die We walked the same paths many times Before we're gone On chilly nights by shivering trees We'll cuddle up with moonshine glee A grizzled bunch of happy critters Dust till dawn But if we should find ourselves once more Behind some mean old trapper's door We'll gnaw the hinges off until our teeth come loose. Then from atop life's tallest bridges and through the heart of all religions, we'll let our pretty little rainbow shine anew. Yes, from atop life's tallest bridges and through the heart of all religions, we'll let our pretty little rainbow shine on you. So as you notice, I was playing guitar in that song. Well, that's a guitar that I bought from Anya Hinkle. So when the pandemic hit, Anya lent me her guitar, and I um, I used the guitar as a coping me mechanism all year. I just picked it and picked it and picked it, and I kind of figured out how to do something or another on it. I'm having a lot of fun with it. And anyway, so Pretty Little Rainbows led me to Stokes County, where I decided to move. I lived in my friend Dan's yard for several weeks and then Laura Lynn Dawsett um, hooked it up and allowed me to stay in her uh, guest house down on Big Creek and you'll see me uh, singing and walking around. I didn't have internet so I just like made little videos and walked around the house singing. I was kind of having fun. Had to heat with a wood stove for a minute. Um, I was figuring my shit out. Uh, living in and out of the van, just kind of rambling, couldn't see anybody. It was a weird moment in time, y'all. But anyway, so here's a little montage of some of the fun I had one year ago uh, in the spring of 2020 in Stokes County, North Carolina. getting settled in Stokes uh, I got to drive up and down the hill to my grandma's house she lives in Forsyth County um, in Winston-Salem and we have a uh, sim similar 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 political persuasion so uh, here's a little bit of grandma for you I'm not fond of Donald Trump uh, I, I know a lot of businessmen think he's wonderful that he's helped the economy but I do not believe what he says. He's a liar. He's a womanizer. He's an asshole. Yes, yes. <laughs> Pardon my French. 
Thanks for helping me. So there was a big election last year, and uh, a lot of things were on the line, especially for very uh, vulnerable people, like people in sanctuary, like Juan Atobar. I had this encounter. I had gone to do a Duke performance series filmed outside in Durham. On the way back to Stokes County, I stopped through Eflin, my friend uh, Emily and Brode's house, and uh, this Chilean guy, Juan, was there. We didn't really know each other that well, but we had a nice, like, uh, drunken, debaucherous, rainy summer night together. And we're like, yeah, we're a crew. These people have become, since that time, some of my closest friends. So the pandemic has given me a lot of beautiful friendships. But uh, nonetheless, two days after that, uh, debaucherous drunk fest in the rain, we decided to go and, and film and uh, interview Juan Atobar's uh, third year celebration of, if you can call it a celebration, of captivity, basically, because she's trapped in a church till we do something to get her out. Um, that led to making a pilot video for... This concept Matt and Matt Hildreth and I had been talking about, which was using music with uh, coalition building and grassroots politics into some sort of uh, video concept called Picking for Progress. Matt actually came up with that term. So um, I'm going to let you see the pilot for the Picking for Progress series, and then I'll say more about it. Here you go. Hey, y'all. Mi nombre es Joe Troop. Y les quiero invitar a que me acompañen en una gran gira por Carolina del Norte. Estoy iluminando algunas voces increíbles de nuestro estado para mostrarles por qué es tan importante que votemos. Por la influencia de Carolina del Norte en las elecciones nacionales, nuestros votos pueden realmente salvar al mundo este año. Hoy les presento a Juana Luz Tobar Ortega, una luchadora por reformas migratorias. Para evitar ser deportada y separada de sus seres queridos, Juana lleva tres largos años en la iglesia San Barnabas Episcopal en Greensboro. Nos está pidiendo solidaridad. ¿Qué vamos a hacer? Hola, Juana. Hola. ¿Cómo está usted? Pues aquí un poco triste, ¿verdad? Por tanto tiempo estar aquí en, este, en esta situación tan difícil que nos ha tocado vivir. ¿Usted no tiene el privilegio de votar? No. Eh, ni siquiera de, de estar legalmente, ni siquiera de salir de, de esta iglesia en este momento. ¿Qué diría usted a la gente que dice que votar no cambia nada? Nosotros, los que estamos viviendo esta situación de estar en santuario, de estar encerrados, de estar prisioneros prácticamente, necesitamos que la gente salga a votar. Necesitamos de la ayuda de los que pueden ir a votar. En el 2017 fue algo que nos cambió la vida por completo. Me ha separado de mi familia, me ha separado de mis hijos, de mi esposo. De la noche a la mañana todo se derrumbó. Lo que está sucediendo en el país, tantas manifestaciones, tanta gente yendo a la calle para protestar eh, estos abusos, ¿le da algo de esperanza? para su futuro. Yo sé que algo, algo bueno va a salir de todo eso, porque el que es racista ve al moreno igual que al hispano. No es justo lo que están haciendo con ellos y con nosotros. Yo me identifico porque ellos han sido discriminados y nosotros los hispanos también. Mediante esta pandemia, tantos migrantes se encuentran en posición de estar haciendo un trabajo esencial. Es decir, la sociedad de Carolina del Norte depende de sus servicios, depende de su, de su trabajo, pero no tienen, el, no tienen derechos en este mismo lugar. Yo lo digo por experiencia, ¿verdad? Nosotros, los inmigrantes, somos los que hacemos el peor trabajo. A nosotros es cual, eh, siempre en cualquier trabajo es lo que nos dan lo peor, lo más duro. Y lo más fácil es como para los blancos. O sea, esa es una discriminación. Yo tengo esperanza 
Y yo pienso que todos los que estamos en santuario, ¿verdad?, o el emigrante, pues, tiene esa esperanza de que un día entre un gobierno y nos ayude. Yo no me imagino otros cuatro años metida aquí en este lugar. Y tengo la fe de que va a haber un cambio. Antes ella no era prioridad para inmigración porque ella siempre ha hecho las cosas bien, eh, ha trabajado todo el tiempo, ha pagado sus taxes todo el tiempo. Y ahora que las cosas han cambiado un poco por el cambio de gobierno, ahora mi mamá está en la lupa. Ha, ha sido difícil, fue muy difícil tomar la decisión porque sabíamos de que ella tenía que estar en la iglesia todo el tiempo y no dejar la iglesia, tuvo que dejar su trabajo. La inmigración quiere que simplemente ella se vaya y deje su familia acá. Por nacer en otro lado, dice no eres de aquí. Mientras sin tus esfuerzos, ni podrían vivir. Grita en calle migrante, esperanza no hay. Do your work without paper. Keep us fed and go die. Yo te veo migrante. Me conmueve tu lucha. Aguantando tortura en mi tierra natal. Sociedad descarada. Ni le entra la mente. Este gran continente es tu tierra ancestral. Nuestra esperanza es que un día todo esto va a, ser, va a cambiar. So that pilot led to a whole series of 15 videos which were commissioned through a grassroots political coalition that we built in North Carolina amongst at first four different political organizations and then later I think as many as six or seven and I got to do a video a week with Brode and Emily and oftentimes Juan the Chilean buddy and um, it was a wild four-month ride. I've never worked that hard in my life. It just was incredible. Anyway, you know, I'm getting ahead of myself. I should mention, like, after that pilot got accepted, parallel to all of this was that was going on, I had made an internet friend with a guy named Negosi Fields, who I had met here and there at festivals throughout the country when we were all on tour. But we started hanging out online and realized that we got along fabulously. He lives in Lafayette, Louisiana, and he invited me down to come play old time music, which I've never really had, uh, on the five string banjo, which sounded like a really cool concept. So I kind of got to, I took a trip down um, on a whim and we made music for a couple weeks. And then we even went into the studio at Dirk Powell's and cut a little demo. So. This is that was the beginning of a of something that has blossomed as you will see later in the video. So check it out. Little trip to Lafayette, Louisiana. <laughs>
my trip to Lafayette, I finally was able to find this house in Danbury, North Carolina. And I moved in, it was, un it was not finished yet, but I needed a place with internet. I got it quick, it was great. Uh, it's now finished and wonderful. It was unfinished and wonderful then. I did have a scare, I've had many a scare, um, because I saw a binchuca in my house one of the first nights and I was like, I know what that is, I've lived in Argentina. It's a very dangerous bug, which bores its head into, it's a parasite. It sucks your blood and then it shits. And then you, as it's sucking your blood, you like move the shit into the wound and it causes a disease called Chagas, Mal de Chagas, which I was terrified of living in Argentina. And then I was like, well, thank God that's over moved to North Carolina. And what do you know? Kissing bugs everywhere. So y'all, there's a tropical disease in North America. It's called Mal de Chagas, Chagas disease. Beware, check out these bugs. If you see one, they're everywhere. Thank you, Elon. I don't know why I'm looking up, but you can be like God, I guess. Elon has put me in touch with people. I've now sent, I think, five or six dead frozen bugs to a center in South Carolina where they're gonna test them for Chagas. And then if I have Chagas, I guess I'll go get treated in LA or something for it. So anyway, here you go. So as you can see, I live in an unfinished house, which is beautiful. Ooh, look at that thunderstorm. That's a big one. And uh, it's a beautiful little place, but it's unfinished. So there's cracks. I had to just cover up these cracks. Why did I cover up so many cracks? Well, the other night I found a bug right here, which I recognize not on this fabric, actually, the fabric I found it on is now thrown away. Why did I throw it away? Well, that bug that I found was a chinche, pinchuca, kissing bug, they're called here. I also found a dead one right there on my floor. It's a bug which transmits a disease known as mal de chagas in South America. These bugs are now in North Carolina because of climate change. In fact, I found one, like I said, and I froze it. There it is, a frozen binchuca. Here's the other one. Okay, so while I was dodging Chagas disease, I started making the Picking for Progress, Picking for Progress video series. And I really would suggest you watching all of them. Yes, it was a get out the vote initiative. That was kind of an excuse. That was an excuse to illuminate progressive voices from across the state of North Carolina and kind of own up to what North Carolina and the United States is, which is a big clusterfuck. Woo, sorry for my foul mouth. Is this offensive? I'm so sorry. You don't like cussing? Well, start living in a van and then you'll start cussing and you'll get over it, okay? So um, I'd like to show you some highlights from the music, the music that I played in the series. The series was interviews, sort of like a mini documentary, uh, and as you've already seen, but anyway, these are some of my musical highlights and I hope you enjoy them. Alamance County Jailhouse, back in 2015. In a place where the biggest crooks get all scot-free. A hard-working mama went weak in the knees. 40,000 cash bill, an outlandish decree. The escorting officer, startled as well, said, your magistrate, pardon, but that's an awfully high bill. He said, I meant what I said, she pays up or gets jail. And such was the harsh fate of Dream of Caldwell. Dream I managed to take care till one summer's day, when another The dreamer wasn't it all she was destined to pay. When they issued a warrant, she went and turned herself in and fell prey to a venomous magistrate's whim. Her kinfolk knew of a bondsman, they found a way to post bill. She went home in exchange for a mountain of dead.
Sheriff Johnson wants Mayberry, thinks Andy Griffith is real. Another twisted old man with cold-hearted ideals. His prison's raking in millions, stealing bonds from the poor. He takes great pleasure exacting what they cannot afford. Dream of was counsel to take a plea deal, which meant three woeful nights locked in concrete and steel. Where she stared a sick system point blank in the eye. And found from hell or high water, one does she watch it die? And that's how dream wound up here. Fearless leaders persevere. Fight on dream through the years. Sent to lead and help us here. After serving her sentence, life was never the same. With a criminal record tethered tied to her name. Or the death growl of Dixie amidst a brutal fire storm. Dream of Caldwell has risen. She's demanding reform. When I was With five. your dorky and very With my weird father. Dorky and very weird father. <laughs> Who I love to do. 
They sent them out west. That was like doom. Because in our beliefs, everything that's really bad, you send it out to where it's dark, out to the west. I'm sure the people felt like it was the end of the world. We brothers, we brothers, be moon men. Say we don't want to die. We don't want to die no more. Government's got a tight grip, it's just my keys I'm a threat and I was on you right here Why do you hate me? I don't hate you for what you kind did Can't help to think you don't want me in a country My kind built, I just wanna live Without worrying about being hunted It's crazy as I see these protectors that put us under Well times change or is it the end? All day I wonder why they wanna kill us When peace and a chance was all we wanted We don't wanna die The problem is a system that continues to look at a race of people and think that we're not intelligent enough or qualified enough. And we've proven them to be wrong in almost every aspect, yet we're still treated that way. What do these elections mean to a black trans woman? I can only speak for myself. What I experience is still the injustice the inequality, the prejudice towards a community of people. For trans people of color, I speak from a platform of education, homelessness, employment, health. These four key areas are what from a trans black person's perspective are some of the most difficult challenges that we face. So it's all systemic racism. And until that's dismantled in this country, we're not gonna see much change. Because that's the root of it. I think we're in a different dimension, to be honest. <laughs> I think things are just crazy right now because things are so out of hand on the national level. There's people who are upset because people are saying black lives matter. Black lives do matter. That's not an affront to your white life. And I don't know why, as a Christian person, you can't see that. So it does seem out of control right now. It feels like maybe this is how Germany felt in the 30s before Hitler took power, or right before everything got out of control. All around this country, from the east to the west, everywhere I go, I find the same old mess. Good-hearted people doing the best they can in a mucked-up system that don't give a damn. But I'll hold your hand if you hold my Life on earth is borrowed time And as long as we're living We all to strive to love along the way Get it, Rich!
that our heels hit the pavement and the peace flag wave. Fear calls the mountains or the prairies wide. There's a new day at dawn and but we can't waste time. I'll hold your hand if you hold mine. Life on earth is borrowed time. And as long as we're living, we ought to strive to love along the way. Okay, so Picking for Progress went through the elections, and then there were elections, and tensions were high, and the United States was really damn annoying, and then winter came, and I was able to sort of like settle into my little community up here. Well, the community of me alone in Danbury, and occasionally with friends from up the road. But uh, mostly I just hung out at my house, and I walked around Hanging Rock State Park. I have hiked so much this year, I could have probably, you know, walked from here to Cincinnati and back or something. I don't know how many hundreds of miles I've walked, but I've spent a lot of time in the woods this year because that's been my only friend, except for online stuff, but that's just not the same. So anyway, here's a little glimpse of life in Danbury and my walking around Hanging Rock State Park. Oh, and also uh, my hometown, which is right down the road. Flashero. I was born in Winston-Salem, which is right about there. You can barely see it. Here we are, downtown Winston-Salem, North Carolina, the city of dreams. And that building peeping its head up over Skyline is affectionately known as the Penis Building. Winston-Salem, always happy to see you. Okay, so in December-ish, I decided that I was gonna make a make an album this year because I like to have stuff to do, what can I say? And uh, I had to make demos in order to make that happen. I did make the demos and now it's happening, like I start uh, in a week, I go into the studio um, in Nashville and then in Durham. So, yay. Uh, that happened in the first stage in making an album happen is, well, you know, getting material together and then going to your editor's house. So I went to my editor, my lovely friend, Abigail Browning's uh, home. She's the other half of my poetic heartbeat. And uh, we had a sesh, got oriented and uh, then I hit it, came back home, did a bunch of demos, and that was cool, it gave me something to do. A very important step when making an album at the, at the initial stages is to, uh, to talk with your editor <laughs> and her hamster. Uh -huh. <clears throat> this is my hamster. So we just spent the weekend um, kind of like on the chopping block, right, with new material. And uh, this radiant woman always helps me in the process, and she does not shy away from telling me <laughs> what I don't want to hear. Since I'm back from Abigail's, I have a more of a uh, of a will to just go ahead and crank out some demos, because that's the next step in uh, in getting 
an album together. My grandma gave me that. Jose gave me that. There's the Mariner's Compass. I give votar, claramente. Ciao, Trump. Um, let's see. Yeah, you have to make a little studio. You gotta pull resources. That's the next step in making an album. So this little cubicle that I've made consists of my mattress and my box spring and an inflatable mattress from Walmart that I think is one of the guys in my bands. Um, so therefore I have to like sleep on the floor, but I've got a lovely sleeping bag and uh, it's fine. I like sleeping on the floor. I did that for two years when I lived in Japan. So this is basically what I'm dealing with. And to record some demos. Once the demos were done, winter just seemed to drag on. Did anyone else have that impression that winter sucked? It was awful. And it, it, we had to entertain ourselves in any way that we could. And there was total political upheaval. I was, you know, I went to the coast with my friend Juan. We rented a, an apartment at Topsail Island for a few days and then driving on the way back and boom, Capitol riots. And I took note of behavior in the area that I was living. And I was like, I got to get out of Dodge. So I went back to the Pony Girls lair down there in uh, Lafayette and uh, made some music. The storm passed. Biden was sworn in. The aftermath of the insurrection was legit. Shit was going down. Shit went down. Shit's still going down. Anyway, tensions, at least in my personal life, have, you know, gone back to... They've leveled off, but I've made a montage of that topsy-turvy moment in history, and hopefully you can relate to it. Hola, the night track. Hace mucho tiempo no te veo. Me gustaría que estés a mi lado siempre. Y mi, la 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 The time y'all find a common ground. <laughs> no tiene sentido. Life doesn't have meaning.
Danbury, North Carolina, Georgia Reynolds tonight. You gotta know where you live. You gotta know why you do what you do. This is where I'm from. This Toyota Sienna is about to take me from North Carolina to Lafayette, Louisiana, baby. Setting sun on Georgia High As I give up for to ride Through the night My pony girls, yeah. Oh, them pony girls, The cause is always people making free will decisions. The condition is something else. The condition in which people make those free will decisions may influence them, obviously, to make those decisions. But the ultimate cause is someone making a decision, a free will decision to riot, a free will decision to take out their frustrations through violence. My name is Frank Turk. You're listening to I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist. Made it. That was a long day. This is my first ever shrimp po boy sandwich i'm gonna eat it right now this is where rehearsals just happened is it like a magnet or something now like... we're listening Biden. What he's been campaigning and what I've been hearing from Biden, that he's able to get this economy back on and get everybody back on track, jobs and, and, uh, and this pandemic being taken care of. So, I mean, I have, I, I give him my full support, even though I didn't vote for him. And you know what? I'm one of the people that can say I would like to see him turn this economy around and fix this. But uh, so. <laughs> have you seen that shit? <laughs>
you saw, I got to play a lot more music in Lafayette. I'm, I'm leaving for Lafayette again tomorrow. It's going to be my fourth trip in the past, I guess, nine, eight or nine months down there. It's a long way, but it's worth it because my musical friendships down there are very impactful. They got jiggy down in Louisiana, baby. Anyhow, um, after that trip and after, you know, late January rolled around, I came back to uh, North Carolina and I just enjoyed home a little bit. Um, so there were a couple big destructive ice storms up here uh, this year. And the aftermath of those storms was pretty devastating at the park. So it was nice to settle back into sort of a more, slightly more peaceful moment in history. But then there was another indicator of climate change. I mean, there are kissing bugs in North Carolina now. And the trees can't take a little ice storm. This last montage to close out this video is a little, I guess, uh, representation of my wake-up call to what's happening. And right down the mountain is uh, Lionel Sanders, uh, living in Winston-Salem, Argentinian guy, percussionist that I've become friends with and, and making a lot of music with. And uh, I've kind of used the song that we did for the Picking for Progress series as the backdrop for the environmental devastation I'm seeing in Stokes County. Um, I guess it will end on kind of a sad note, but it's okay, right? Life is sad and happy and it's all things, a whole bunch of things. I hope that you'll join me at Common Ground on the Hill this summer for the virtual online banjo course that I'm doing. Check out all the incredible uh, teachers that are gonna be there. My friend Negosi's teaching fiddle. And anyway, I can't wait until I'm back at Common Ground in person and we can all click cans and hold hands and be merry. There was a big ice storm. Let's see, well, a few days ago. Look at all the trees that are down, it's crazy. Year by year, it's more and more of a barren wasteland. And they call this left-wing propaganda. Give me a fucking break, guys.
love and rage make progress when they are combined waking stubborn minds with revelations call your friends and neighbors what is right is right let us not give in to earth's damnation Valiente juventud nos llaman a la lucha entre amor y rabia nos apelan generación de fuerza manteniendo abiertas las puertas de la extinción rebelión.